Hi, I'm Kyle Wathan. Welcome to my series on simulation of adaptive clinical trials, where to start and how to expand. In this series, we will focus on adaptive clinical trials that you cannot simulate with commercial software. Through a series of examples, we will build the skills necessary so that you can design and develop your own custom simulation code in R. If you have any questions or comments, please leave a note in the description. Hope you enjoy the course. To begin, the adaptive clinical trials that we are speaking of are the ones that are pre-planned adaptions in advance before the study starts. These are the only kind that are acceptable and through simulation you're able to assess the operating, operating characteristics. In particular, we will look at cases when there are no commercial software available. We'll focus on how to start development of the necessary R programs and we'll have hands-on R code utilization in RStudio. To help you gain the skills, we'll begin with a fixed sample trial and move to a Bayesian adaptive randomization with continual monitoring. Through these examples, you will learn a series of skills to help you build the most complex and innovative adaptive clinical trials. The audience is intended for clinical trial designers with some experience in R, and we will only use the simple features of R until the later videos. The course setup, we will have a series of lectures ranging in time from 3 minutes to 30 minutes, and we will alternate between presentation and hands-on R code. All of the R source files are available on GitHub. A link is provided in the description. To begin, a little terminology. A clinical trial simulation is a way of testing new statistical methodology or approaches without treating real patients. The trial design is what defines the details about how the trial will be executed. These would include the number of patients that would be enrolled, analysis methods, decision criteria, randomization scheme, monitoring plan, to mention a few. In addition, the trial design must specify any adaptions that will be made or utilized during the trial. This is in contrast to simulation de design. The simulation design defines the details about how all aspects of the trial will be simulated. It would include things such as the accrual rates. Do you want to consider cases where the recruitment ramps up over the first several months of the trial? It would include things like how we're going to simulate patient outcomes. Do we need them to be correlated or are they independent? It could also include things such as a dropout model. Are you expecting to have patients that drop out during your trial? These are all important aspects of the simulation design. You could also include many other details, anything that is specific about getting the simulation to be as close to reality and what you expect in the trial as possible. Virtual trial. This is the combination when you take the trial design and the simulation design and you put them together. When you have enrolled virtual patients through one trial, that is what we will refer to as a virtual trial. There is a link to the GitHub repository listed in the description. It will have all the necessary code as we go through this, so you don't need to develop all of it. It contains several example folders, and the starting point will be the code template folder. The code template folder is not intended to be working code, but rather provide a starting point with some function suggestions on how to develop the design we're looking at. We will review the R source code in the next lectures, and we'll start in the code template. We'll go from the code template and expand into example one, and then from there we'll go on to a more complicated setting. The first three examples are as follows. We'll begin with a simple, fixed sample design that only connects, conducts the analysis at the end of the study. This is fairly straightforward and easy to do. We will then move on to example two, which incorporates adaptive randomization fe features and makes the time to observing the patient's outcome random. This adds several levels of com complexity into the code and especially in how you design and think about the study. From there, we'll move to example three, 
where we extend the earlier two examples to include early stopping and a ramp up in accrual. In future videos, we will look at things such as sensitivity simulations. This is where we understand the difference between the simulation model and the analysis model. They don't always have to be the same, and a lot can be learned about vary by varying the simulation model to be different than the analysis model. It can help you understand what will happen in practice if things depart from your assumptions. We could extend to things such as having two subgroups and making a decision in each subgroup rather than the trial as a whole. We'll look at more complicated analysis models that will require the use of JAGS or STAN to sample the posterior distribution. We'll look at GO and NO-GO framework, and while there are many options available for this, we'll focus on the Bayesian approaches. We'll look into predictive probabilities, where these are often used to calculate the probability of, the probability of success at the end of the study given the data you have at interim time point. After considering predictive probabilities, we'll move on to advanced topics like platform trials. In particular, we will focus on a platform trial simulation package in R that I will release later this year. Any questions or comments that are left in descriptions will help drive the next videos and any additional topics that we will look at. A few notes. All development will be done using RStudio, and it, this can be downloaded from rstudio.com. GitHub will contain all of the code as we go through the series, and I'll add any new examples as we develop the code. Whenever we're developing code, we'll be faced with an option to pick between the most efficient code and readable code. I will always choose the most readable option. This comes with experience and understanding that you will often need to come back to your code weeks or months later to make adaptions, make changes, rerun simulations, and having readable code can be very useful when needing to do this. It is also very beneficial for others to follow and easier to understand rather than having difficult code to, to follow and understand. We'll use variable naming, and in particular, we'll look at using camel case with data type prefixes. In case you're not familiar with data type prefixes, a couple examples are D for double, N for integer, B for binary, V for vector, M for matrix. And a couple things specific for R, we'll use L for list and C for class. A couple examples have been provided. Example one, how to start. So we begin with the description. We'd like to, in this example, we'd like to start simple and simulate a fixed sample design that only conducts the analysis at the end of the study. There will be two arms in the study, standard of care S and the experimental arm E. The primary outcome will be patient response, which we assume to be binary. We assume a conjugate beta binomial prior for the unknown response rate. At the end of the study, we will select S or E if there is greater than a 90% chance that it is the best treatment in the study. Otherwise, no treatment is selected. This design could be done in a very simple fashion. For example, see simpleapproach.r where, where I've provided the code to do this design. This approach would be sufficient if, the desire, if this was the only thing you were doing. However, the desired design is much more complicated and extending the code in this file would be very difficult and likely result, result in error-prone code. For those not familiar with the Bayesian beta binomial, I provide this as a reference and more of the details. Of particular importance is that we will conclude in terms of S or E if the probability that the response rate on it is greater than PU. This PU will be an input that is provided in the code. We need to define the tasks and how we're going to, to simulate this example one. What tasks are necessary? Well, we need to simulate the patient arrival times. We need to randomize patients so that we know what treatment they received, S or E. We need to simulate the patient outcomes. This is based on the treatment that they received. 
We need to create a patient data set for analysis. We need to actually be able to run and conduct the analysis. We need to make decisions about whether we're going to select S or E or neither. We need to be able to keep a summary of these over a large number of replications. Creating functions. It is often a good idea to create functions as they're much easier to test and much easier to organize. You create a function for most or all of the tasks and this makes your code easy to follow so that others can read it and understand what you're doing. Functions should only depend on the data or arguments that are sent into the function. In particular, this means no global variables. There's more on this in the testing section. While R allows us to easily define global variables, it's a very bad programming practice as it can lead to results that are difficult to reproduce. So we will avoid having global variables once we start simulations. Functions are much easier to test than a long code script, and in particular you can use test that, which will be in the video on test-driven uh, development. We'd like to move from the task descriptions to functions examples and provide a few descriptions here. In order to simulate this trial, we needed to be able to simulate patient arrival times. So we would name our function simulate arrival times. Notice that I begin the function name with a capital S and use camel case as well. This makes it much easier to read in the code. In this function, we would like to simulate the arrival times according to a Poisson process for each patient in the study. The inputs to this function would be the quantity of patients and the recruitment rate. What we would like is for the function to return the arrival times, and as a check, we know that the length of the vector should be the number of patients that are enrolled in the study. Randomized patients. We could create a function called getTreatment, and in this function it would take in the randomization probability. For this example, we will fix this to be 0.5, but in the future examples, the adaptive randomization feature could change the randomization probability before each patient is enrolled. We would like to return the treatment where 1 would indicate that the patient received E and 0 indicated that they received S. Simulate patient outcomes. We'll create a function called simulate patient outcome. In this function, we will simulate the outcome based on the treatment that they received so the inputs that we would need are the treatment and the true response probabilities for each treatment. What the function should return is the response for the patient where 1 indicates treatment success and 0 indicates treatment failure. Simulate a virtual trial. What would it look like if we were trying to simulate a single virtual trial? There are several steps that we would go through. The first step is we would need to simulate the patient arrival for all of the patients in the study. Since the arrival times are not impacted by decisions, we can do this up front before simulating any other data. The second step is that we would need to get the treatment assignment for the first patient in the study. We would then need to simulate the outcome based on the treatment that they received. And we would assume for now that the outcome is observed one month after arriving in the trial. While this is not important in this example, it becomes a critical skill needed and we'll learn more about this in examples 2 and 3. You would then re repeat steps 2 and 3 for each patient in the study. After all of the outcomes are observed, we would then build a data set that we would analyze and we would then make decisions. So we'll create a function with a very descriptive name simulate single trial. This trial will simulate one virtual trial. The main reason for creating a function for this is that in a simulation we often need to simulate thousands or tens of thousands of trials in order to understand the, the average behavior for the design. The inputs that we would need for this are the quantity of patients, the priors for S and E, the cutoffs that we want for making decision rates, the true response rates, and the uh, recruitment rate. What we would like is for this function to return the outcome of this trial. Did we select S, did we select E, or did we select neither? 
In the next video, we'll begin looking at the R source code. We will start in the code template folder and move to example one directory. We'll try to show a link between the planning in this presentation and how to develop the, def the functions described earlier. For reference, I provide RStudio, a link to test that by Hadley Wickham, which we will not use in the next one, but we will in the test-driven development, and a link to the YouTube channel. Hope you enjoyed this video and look forward to the next one when we begin our hands-on code where we will develop many new skills. Thank you for watching. See you next time.